Okay, we're live. Proximity Malt, Laurel, Delaware. This is Matt oh, Usual. We probably wait till we start getting people on. Let me take a peek. Okay. All right, we're live in Laurel, Delaware with Proximity Malt. Matt Usual here. Hoping everyone's out there getting ready to join us. We're going to learn a little bit about Mid Atlantic malted wheat. How are we doing, Keith? We got some people starting to filter in, so we'll give them a give them a minute or two and we'll get moving. It's a fine day here in Delmarva as we're getting ready to talk about malted wheat. The barley crop's doing well. It's a sunny day. I even hear people getting ready to go to the beach. <laughs> we're gonna have Matt Bartles joining us and Matt Bartley joining us in a little while. Bartley's from RAR in Cambridge, Maryland. So we're going we're gonna to do our best to go into some details about Mid-Atlantic malted wheat. We're going to give it a few minutes here to get, allow people to, to join us, and we'll get started. You can see we, we got a little bit of show and tell ready. They always taught me that you always, uh, to, to, to talk to people, it's always best to have something to show, tell, touch, and feel. So we're going to do some of that. <laughs> That's a great idea, Christy. I like where your head's at. She says, bring some RAR home. We will bring some <laughs> RAR home because I took it from the fridge at home. So she doesn't have it. That's Christy. That's my wife. Okay. All right. Let's get, let's get started. A uh, little bit, tell you a little bit about what we're going to do today on Instagram Live. Thank you again for joining us. Proximity Malt Instagram Live. This is our second installment. Trying to work with you out there in the world socially uh, while we're socially distancing. Um, Keith Fink and I are here in the conference room in Laurel, Delaware. We have our masks if we need them. But we think it's better if we're not wearing them when we're going live on Instagram. So last a uh, couple weeks ago, we got to learn a little bit about um, wort tasting and, and malt tasting from Jake out in Colorado. Two weeks from now, we're gonna we're gonna be out in a barley field with Mike Mike Spangler. But today, we're gonna focus on everything you wanted to know and more about Mid Atlantic malted wheat. So we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit about what malted wheat is, what the wheat source is, where it came from. And then we're going to get into what qualities and what a brewer wants out of that. Matt Bartley from RER is going to join us. I think he's online now with us. So as we go through, type in your questions. Keith's going to be keeping track of them. And uh, near the end, we're going to do some sensory analysis and try to answer some of your questions. So thank you for joining us. We're really excited to tell you about Mid-Atlantic wheat, actually Mid-Atlantic malted wheat. But before we can really talk about the malt or the, or the malted wheat, we got to talk about wheat. And we want to clear up some things about um, how we describe wheat and, and, and what it really means when we say things like hard red spring or soft white winter or soft white spring. So here on the whiteboard, I got a little diagram to kind of show the major descriptors or characteristics we use to describe wheat are protein, bran, and I'll call it the agriculture, or how it's grown or planted. And we mix these around for different types of wheats, and those different wheats get used for different things in our food supply, not only for malting and brewing. So first thing is protein, percent protein. Something that's high in percent protein, say around 17%, might be called hard. If it's lower in protein, like the wheats that we like to use for malting, it'd be soft maybe closer to 10% protein, total protein. And we'll talk about why that's important as we go later on. Second, we talk about a color. You hear these terms white or red. And when we talk about white or red, we're talking about the bran. What's the bran? The bran is just that outer layer, that insoluble portion on the outside of the kernel. Doesn't mean that there's any particular color to any extract we get from that or anything that might get into the beer. It's just simply what the outer berry looks like. It's used as part of the morphology to describe the variety of that wheat. Lastly, we talk about when is it grown? Well, you got too many times spring wheats and winter wheats. 
spring wheats are planted in the springtime and, and grow throughout the summer and harvested in late summer or early fall. Whereas winter wheats are planted in the fall. They start growing in that nice cool season in the fall. Then they go dormant a little bit for the winter. And then when the sun starts to come out in the spring, they take off and start growing like the grass that we're all cutting in our yards right now. Right now in the mid-Atlantic, the winter wheat is starting to head out, starting to, to get ready to harvest. So the biggest difference here in agriculture is really when it's planted and harvested. And that's what calls it either a spring or a winter. Winter wheats here in the mid-Atlantic, very similar to our winter barleys, are, harvest, are planted in the fall and harvested in the spring. That helps us with all that function of regenerative agriculture from a, from a saving, saving the, uh, soil erosion, making sure we have more green acres, a lot of benefits there to the agricultural practices of winters. So hard red spring wheats are grown primarily in the upper Midwest and they're used for bread. They have a lot of protein, they're hard have a lot of protein that forms that gluten that, that makes bread. Soft white spring wheats are also grown in, in those same areas, similar areas in the Pacific Northwest, and they're soft. They have lower proteins, and they're used for things like cake flours and baked good flours, etc. Here in the mid-Atlantic, we grow soft red winter. It's really about the number three crop that's grown here in the area behind corn and beans. So there's a lot of it. Why is there a lot of it? Well, we're gonna, we're gonna tell you a little bit about that. So soft red winter wheat is very similar to what soft white spring wheat gets used for. Not only is it used for malting, both of those, but they're also used for making cake flours and other pastry goods. So let's talk about why that is. Well, here's a map of the United States, my, my good drawing capabilities show. And traditionally, Malt houses were located in the upper Midwest, and still are, a lot of the big malt houses, or in the Pacific Northwest. In those areas, that's where they grow hard red spring wheat. That's where they grow soft white winter wheat. So the malt houses were able to source what was around them and then provide that to, to brewers as what they could use for malted wheat. Well, here in the Mid-Atlantic, here's us in Laurel, Delaware, and in the Mid-Atlantic, we have a much different climate than you do in the upper Midwest. So we can, we can grow those winter crops. The farmers like it because they can get another crop after it. it has all the benefits of, of protecting the, the soil, uh, that regenerative agriculture. But also there's been a market that's been developed by the people that buy soft red winter wheats. Not only us as maltsters here in Laurel, Delaware, but there are a bunch of mills in the in the Northeast here that buy that soft red winter wheat and they turn it into flour for things that we get to eat that we love, like cookies and cakes and brownies. Well, the development of those varieties and growing in the area have, have developed something that's very suitable to the same qualities that we look for in malted wheat from, from other sources like the soft white winter. So let's talk about what qualities, what qualities do brewers and maltsters look for in malted wheat. Well, what does a brewer use it for? Well, the traditional source of what we always think about from a wheat is hefeweizen in beer. A little bit pale, known to have a lot of foam stability, very good beer. So it's low in color, right? So a good quality the brewers like is that it's low in color. Well, that's fed by being low in protein. Consequently, we want to be able to turn a lot of that wheat mal malted wheat into beer, and that's what we would call high extract. So us as monsters want to want to source wheat that meets those characteristics. The one of the last things that the brewers look for is is a lot of beer uses malted wheat to add foam stability, and in today's day and age, add a little bit of that haze that our that our customers who drink beer like so much for these New England style IPAs and other hazy hazy beers. So we as monsters are trying to source something that's low in protein, high in extract, or high quality starch, and can provide low pro, uh, a low color. So we still want to be able to give that functionality of foam and haze. And that comes from the qualities that are not only in soft white winter, but the soft red winter that's grown right here 
in the mid-Atlantic. So that's mid-Atlantic malted wheat. Soft red winter, it's soft, it's low protein. It's red just because of the bran. And it's grown through the winter, soft red winter, also known as mid-Atlantic malted wheat. Down in front of me here, we've got some samples for some show and tell. Just to show off that uh, little bit of color difference that we see. I'm going to sit down so we can point to them a little bit better here. So here in front of me are samples from malted white wheat that's uh, grown in the Pacific Northwest. Um, was malted at our sister facility in Colorado. So that source is in close proximity to the Colorado plant. But here in the mid-Atlantic, we're in close proximity, meaning the farmers that grow this stuff are right in our back door. And this is mid-Atlantic malted wheat here. You can see the color of the bran is just a tad bit darker. Um, white wheat here is a little bit paler, uh, but that's just the bran on the outside. If we taste a little bit, mmm, that's good malted wheat. That's really good. Gonna make some good beer. Right here, to make beer though, you're gonna grind it, right? So here's what it looks like if you were to grind it. And you can see that endosperm is what we're really talking about, is where you get that extractable material that you make beer from. And that is almost the same exact color. White malted wheat and mid-Atlantic malted wheat. So another way that we can use to help evaluate those process, those products are the hot steep method. Um, ASBC developed this as a way for, for us to, those of us who don't have Congress wort mashing tubs to, to evaluate something that approximates a wort in a brew house. So I did that earlier today. And you can see the two worts right here. So I don't know if Keith, if you can get that close, but you can see mid-Atlantic in my left hand on your right side and the white on my right hand, your left side. The wort that's from each of those is almost the same in color. In fact, you can see it's not red for sure, but just like the white wheat is not white either. So it's a pale brewer's color, right? I would call that brewer's malt color. Um, color from a, a degrees SRM would be in the, the two range. We're gonna taste a little bit of those. We can get some sensory analysis there. Here's the mid-Atlantic. And there's the white. So the white, a little cloudy, I'm not sure why exactly. Nice and bready flavored, clean, nice fresh aroma. The mid-Atlantic, very similar. You get that nice aroma that you, you can almost taste the beer, not quite. It's good and sweet, none of that harshness at all, but that comes through, no graininess. The Mid-Atlantic, a little bit. In this, in this sample, I'd call it even cleaner. Very light, not much flavor at all that carries over. So from a show and tell standpoint, that's the basics of the differences between Mid-Atlantic and white wheat. You can see just that difference is the insoluble portion on the outside of the brand, and that's about it. So at this point, um, remember, type your questions in so Mr. Keith behind the phone can uh, do some question and answer in a little bit. We're going to try to merge in Matt Bartley from RAR in Cambridge, Maryland. Matt is a brewer over there at uh, Cambridge at RAR. They've been a, a great customer with us, and they use some of our mid-Atlantic wheat. Can you hold those up high above the comet feed? He's connected now. We can hear him. We can't see him yet. We're almost seeing him. The thunder is just a pain in the damn line. Thanks again, Matt. All right. Well, we're to get got a couple of the beers here that, uh, that RAR uses. Were we able to make that work, Keith? And we're just going to try again. All right. We'll get him back. We're going to get him back here. Uh, don't forget to type in your questions. Um, so today we're, we're, we're really trying to 
uh, show how excited we are about our, our product, Mid-Atlantic Malted Wheat. Um, again, from proximity malt, because it's in close proximity to the malt house here and to you, the brewer or, or distiller um, or other user that might use this product. All right, we're crossing our fingers. We're trying to get Bartley in here. Hey! We got him. We got him. It's a little... Yeah, it's a few, few Matt Bartley, can you hear us? Yeah. We'll have to see if we... There we go. Here we go. Hey, guys. Bartley, you there? A little bit of a delay. Well, let's see if we can work this technical glitch out. Keith, do we have... Uh, looks like we're going to get him back. He's jumped off and jumped back on. We're trying the wonders of technology in today's day and age. Anyway, I, what we're going to talk to Matt about is um, where they use mid-Atlantic malted wheat. Um, they make a, an awesome product. It's uh, Groove City Hefeweizen. This is a, the traditional wheat beer. Uh, we're going to taste some of this in a little bit. We're hoping to get him on the line so we could kind of crack a beer and talk over what, uh, what they've been able to use it for. Any luck, Keith? Mm -hmm. Well, well, we'll work through this technical glitch, no problem. Um, why don't we do this? What, 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 what Bartley was going to talk about was how do they use it at RER? Well, they, 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 they found that um, they've been able to use mid-Atlantic malted wheat basically as a direct replacement for what they had been using before, a, a malted white wheat product. And um, they've been able to sit, save a little bit, too, because... One of the benefits of, of this being in close proximity to the malt house is that there are certain saving, there's a, a certain amount of logistical savings that we don't have to transport that all over the place. And, and that can be translated into a better price to you, the brewer. So if you can imagine if we didn't have to bring it in all the way from, from the upper Midwest or the Pacific Northwest, all the way to, to here on the East Coast, there's a lot of cost that goes into those logistics and just moving it around. So here in the Mid-Atlantic, we're able to offer that Mid-Atlantic wheat at a little bit better price, too. So see your sales person, and they can get you all those details. My job is to interact with you from a, a technical service standpoint. Um, my background in brewing and malting lens, uh, hopefully can help answer any questions you might have. Um, again, we're talking about malted wheat. It's, it's made from uh, the Mid-Atlantic wheat that is soft, lower protein. It's high extract, high quality starch, just like you might get from a soft white wheat product from that's grown out west. Plus, it has the regenerative agricultural uh, capabilities that that uh, you might know it as a winter cover crop and all the benefits that come along with it. So, at the, at the brew house, they've been able to not only at RER but at, at some of our other customers as well. They use this as one for one and been very happy with it. Um, we're gonna we're gonna crack one of these RERs. Hefeweizen and see what it looks like. He's going to try to join us in just a second, too. But we do have a question um, that says, are the kernels similar? Yeah, so the, the kernels are, that, that's a great question. Are the kernels similar? And in some publications, um, even some book, recent books that came out, you might read how the kernels might be of a different size and they might mill differently. In fact, um, our product is, is actually showing very similar, what we would call plumpness or size of the kernels. Those kernels next to each other, um, maybe a little hard to see, but we've been able to work with brewers, um, and they've been successful in using this product and getting high extracts without having to make mill adjustments. That's the big key, so you can just keep right on rocking with what you got. Cool. Bartley has asked us to give him one second. He's trying to find a better spot in the brewery, maybe, than uh, where he was. All right, well, we're going to jump ahead to our sensory experience. Hopefully, Mr. Bartley will be able to have one. Keith's getting his ready, so we're going to see what this looks like in the finished product. Keith, have we got any other questions coming in as we 
as we open up our no questions R A R Groove City Hefeweizen. But uh, in case we don't get the story from uh, Mr. Bartley himself, uh, we think it a good reminder that some of the things that R A R really has told me um, in the past is that they're they're seeing a really good extract out of it. And, um, and, you know, one of the coolest parts for Matt is, and I hope he gets on to tell us the story a little better than I can, but he actually knows one of our farmers that provides mm -hmm. us with uh, barley and wheat. So he's got a pretty interesting connection to it um, from field to glass, literally. So Another one of the cool. benefits of, uh, of, of being amongst the malt house, of being amongst the barley fields, being amongst the wheat fields, um, it's it's great to see your local your local brewery using some local or regional based ingredients. Um, hopefully, our customers will see that. Your customers will see that. And that's not that's not a unique story either. And I, I know that uh, some of our customers over in on the other side of Maryland, over towards Boston City, um, are also brewers, and uh, they actually live on some of the farms where some of the barley's grown too. But today we're talking about wheat. Hey, uh, Jason, our, uh, our regional rep in New, in New Jersey and Pennsylvania wants us to remind everyone that our malts are available as an add-on on Beersmith, too. And I think that's something new for us. And it's been, uh, it's been really nice so far. I think a lot of people have really appreciated it. So that's awesome. Yeah, that's a great reminder, Jason. Thank you. We just recently put um, the, a lot of the proximity malts are available on Beersmith. So if you use that to make your recipes, you should be able to find... Uh, the analysis and all the products that proximity offers. Hey, oh, I think we got Matt Bartley on the line. Hey, Matt Bartley. Yeah, nice. All right. <laughs> cheers. I think, cheers, guys. I found a good spot uh, where I have an uh, internet connection finally. <laughs> all right. Great. Well, we, we got a little bit ahead of ourselves here. We cracked a beer while we were getting going. Um, but maybe you could tell us a little bit about how RAR has used the Mid Atlantic wheat and what your experience has been with it. So um, I can see the country ride can that you have, and I know, I'm pretty sure you have a Groove City can from what I saw earlier. Um, Groove City right there, um, that is about half and half of a recipe of the wheat, and um, it's a really good product. Um, we, we've used both types that you guys carry um, and recently switched over to the Mid-Atlantic, and we love what we've seen so far. Uh, as far as yields and how it works uh, with our brew house setup. We, Bartley, we had a question earlier um, on, on the kernel size, and we, we've been able to show that the kernel size has been the same, and most, most people have not uh, had m to make many changes with mills. I know you guys have a, you have a four-roll mill there, right? And have you had to do any changes with milling the, the, the Mid-Atlantic wheat? No. Um, really, the only thing I've noticed is just that color that you see from it. I think I, think I heard you going into – I was really cutting out when, um, yeah, you were showing the wart samples and showing the, the kernels and whatnot. And, yeah, just that color right off the get-go, you see it. But as far as what we see – I mean, I mean, there, there's your examples right there. I mean, there's, there's really no difference. You know, at first, the color is kind of off-putting <laughs> if you look at the kernels uh, side by side in your hands. But um, yeah, no, we haven't, we haven't noticed any changes in the finished product. That's excellent, excellent feedback. Hey, Barley, one of the things I brought up earlier was uh, your connection to the farmer. Yes. Uh, so actually, one of my good buddies uh, works for a farm um, right here outside Herlock. Um, and uh, he, he knows for a fact that you guys get barley and grain from him. So it's kind of a, a cool, you know, full circle of I've got a very good friend who's a farmer. I'm a brewer and I use product that he gets to you guys. And it's all local. And I mean, you know, it's all within, you know, Laurel's what, 40, 45 minutes from Cambridge, maybe an hour of that. So, I mean, you know, we're all just right here in the same general area. So um, I was actually really surprised when he told me, he was like, wait, you use proximity grain? Like, I know my stuff goes there. So I, it was just really funny, uh, probably over a couple of RAR beers or something that he told me that. So 
just the full cir circleness of everything. I don't even think that's a word, but uh, it 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 just makes for everything to come together better. I think because you know in this day and age, uh, especially with everything going on, uh, you want local communities and uh, you know everybody to really stick together and just. And I just thought that was a really cool story. Great. Great. Thanks for sharing, Bartley. Hey, yeah. Um, what, one, one thing we wanted to, to get to is we had some questions coming in. Were there any questions that came in for Bartley? Uh, no questions for Matthew so far, but uh, I did see one that asked about, uh, maybe you can just feel this one real quick, uh, malting process versus barley. Is there any difference for wheat? So, so that's, that's a really good question, and us as maltsters are kind of challenged when we start malting wheat. Um, there's no husk on wheat, so the biggest change is probably in steeping. Uh, in steeping, it uptakes water a little bit faster, so our steep schedule is a little bit less. So we have to watch that a little bit closer uh, to make sure we hit our steep moistures right in, in that shorter time. And then also in germination, because the berries are a little bit small, smaller is not the right word, but they, they tend to compact a little bit more. And at the malt house, we have to be very mindful of that so that in the germination compartment, we, we give it enough air and we stir it, uh, but we have to stir it gently as not to break up the acrospires that, that show it's growing. So there are a, a couple of challenges that way from how it packs in the bed. Um, we, tr we tend to keep a little bit higher airflow on it. Um, and it's all because we want to keep it gentle because it doesn't have the husk there to protect it. Cool. Um, let's see. Maybe this will be a good one for you, uh, Barley. Uh, we got a question that says, at what percentage, if any, would brewers need to use rice hulls to assist in the lottery? So that's an interesting question. Um, we used to use them a lot. Um, honestly, I'm about to hit five years here, and I'd say in the first year, two years, two and a half years, we were using them a lot. And uh, back then we were on a 15 barrel system and pretty much since we changed over to our 30 barrel system, we haven't had to use them at all. Um, and we just, we honestly don't even purchase them anymore. Um, I think we've sort of learned how to, I don't know the best word, manipulate the mash maybe, I guess, to have to, so that we could wean ourselves out of using them. Um, they were a great help, I think, on our smaller system. But once we got onto the larger uh, barrelage of a brew house, I think we kind of didn't need to just didn't need to use them anymore. To be honest, gotcha. That's a good story. I know that you said Groove City is about fifty fifty, right? Fifty fifty percent malted wheat. Yeah, we've we've found that um, with that much wheat, kind of just a good rule of thumb is uh, wetter is better. So we just know to, to get the water flow a little bit higher. And uh, that just kind of helps alleviate any problems uh, with um, the mash and then uh, during the runoff process. But with, but with adding a little bit more uh, water, um, we noticed with the more recent wheat, uh, white wheat that we were getting, and now especially since we moved to the mid-Atlantic wheat, um, that... Uh, our yields and that our runoff uh, has been even better. Um, Good news. Just in we so kind of to sum it up, say we were shooting to get have a thirty barrel batch. We've noticed that sometimes we were getting thirty one, uh, thirty two, sometimes um, thirty and a half. You know, just we're kind of exceeding that thirty barrel threshold, which is great because you know without having to change anything, we're able to extract more. So, I mean, that great. That kind of in and of itself kind of speaks to uh, the, you know, uh, results that we're seeing with that, uh, with that wheat. Th thanks, Bartley. I think we've got time for maybe one more question and then we'll probably call it day. I don't, uh, I think we're good. No more questions. If anyone wants to, we're going to give you a couple seconds here. Maybe we'll all chug the rest of our beer. And well, I can't well, see Bartley. Does he have a beer for it with us? He's got a, he's I got do. I'm glad they uh, well, a group city, but uh, these this country ride came right off the uh, the line today, so uh, I said I got to get the freshest one I can. So all right, all right. Cheers, man. Well, here's cheers to Barley. Cheers, guys. Thanks for having me, Barley. Thanks for making time for us. 
And thank no you to all you viewers out there for making time to, to, to look, to watch us on Proximity Mall Instagram Live. This is our second installment. We're going to try to do this again in, in two weeks. We'll be coming to you on, uh, from a barley field as they're starting to mature. Again, this is a discussion of everything you wanted to know and more about Mid-Atlantic malted wheat. It's soft red wheat. It's high quality starch extract for you, the brewer, and provides all the same functionality. So cheers. Thank you very much for tuning in. Thanks, guys. Hi, guys.